Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about some validation. I know in my last video, by the way, if you haven't checked up on our videos the last couple, go ahead and do so. They kind of play a role in what we're doing today. We started off with this one, how to create a SQLite database with Entity Framework Core in our ASP.NET Core web app. And today we're going to talk about validation because last episode, or last video, we wrote to a database with Entity Framework Core. And we wrote from a form, but we didn't really validate it. And that's kind of important. We want to at least do a little validation to ensure that they give us what we want before we put it in the database. And by the way, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm going to try to put more videos out on a regular basis. I know I've been hit and miss. And little plug, uh, this is the standing desk I use. I, I absolutely love it. And if you're interested in checking out a standing desk, um, I'll have this one down below if you want to go check it out for yourself. I've been using it for over a year now since the pandemic first hit and uh, for my home office and I've loved it ever since. So if you remember correctly, let's go ahead and let's start our web app again just to kind of refresh your memory. Hopefully you remember. But if you're like me, your memory's complete crap sometimes. Here's our add users page and here's our basic form where we could fill in email address, name, and username. But let's say you know, they filled an email address and they filled in name, but they forgot to fill in the username and they just hit submit. Well, if we go back to our code, we don't really do anything to check that that's done, right? And let's look at our database. I don't remember if we look at our users table and username, it could be null. It doesn't have this not null attribute uh, with this column. So maybe that's what we should do first. We should make the rest of these not null and then we can do a little validation with the model state. So what is the model state? The model state represents errors that come from two subsystems, either model binding, well not either, model binding and model validation. And it'll make more sense once we look at it. But here's a good example on Microsoft's page. We have different tags above different properties in our class to define what's required. Maybe uh, there's a number and it has to be a range. We'll do one of those too and uh, we'll check out the different options. So let's go ahead and go back to our user model. And I think I said I wanted to make all of these required. So I'm going to above the name and that's where we're going to start out. I'm going to put in square brackets uh, required. Wow, here we go, not typing again. And if you don't already have it, it'll probably give you a red squiggly. Let me stop this. So. It'll probably give you a red squiggly line, and you'll have to bring in system.componentModel.data annotations. And then we're going to do the same with uh, username and email, because these are all going to be required. And something we could also do, we can give them more than one. So email, for instance, maybe we want to give it also an email address data annotation. But for our instance, we can do that. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. But we have, actually no, we don't have, oh yeah we do, we have type email. So the client side is actually going to validate that for us in the HTML. Um, so we could do double validation, I mean it doesn't hurt, uh, but it's not really required. I'm just going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to add a new attribute because we're going to have to rebuild our migration and then rebuild our database table with Entity Framework anyway because we're going to change these from uh, nullable to not null. And I'm going to add a new property. And this is going to, let me just put prop. This is going to be an int. And let's make this age. And my thought is, uh, a good example is, I'm going on Steam. And I want to look at a particular game. And it's rated M for mature. And they want to see that I'm 17 and older, I think. And so let's say we have something like that. Uh, I'm going to make the range of this integer go from, um, Let's say we want 16 and up on our website, so 16 to 99. Um, and you can make this you know, an absurdly high number, I'm just thinking realistically. And you can do something similar with strings. You can set a maximum length if you wanted to. And let's say you didn't want these huge long strings uh, inside of different properties. Um, you can do string length and then maximum length. So let's say we only wanted, what is this, email? We only want our email address to be 100 characters max. So let's go ahead and uh, we don't need that. Um, so let's take that out. But what I want to also do 
is I want to put an error message in case this gets invoked. Let's say they forget the name. We want it to display something that says, hey, please enter a name. Uh, it's required or something like that. So what I'll do is I'll put in parentheses error message. And you can see IntelliSense knows what we're doing. And it's going to put error message equals and then in a string, please enter a name. And then we'll end the parentheses. And I'm going to copy this and do something very similar with all of these. And username instead of name, uh, username. And then email, please enter an email. And then we can do error message. Uh, age has to be between 16 and 99. Ugh, there we go. So we just gave it another parameter of this range with the error message that we want to show the user in case they do something wrong. And that's really important. So let's go ahead and let's bring up tools and go to the NuGet package manager and the package manager console. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to create another migration. So we created a second migration. So I guess this will be the third. And I want to rebuild our database because not only are we adding a new column for age, but we're also adding, like I said, the, the nullable or not nullable, I guess. So let's do add migration and we'll call this like third migration, I guess. And that'll do its thing. Okay, and then let's do update database. said it did it. Uh, I'm not sure how this refreshes. Maybe we have to let's see. Yeah, we might have to reopen the database. I'm not sure about this tool. Wait. Okay, so I'm going to close the database and reopen it and see if the change has been made. All right, so I reopened it. Let's look at users. And here we have a new name, age, and it's not null. And all of these other ones are not null as well. Um, so that makes sense, right? Let's go back to the user model. Now it updated our database. And what we want to do now is we want to display to the user errors if they forgot to put something. So let's add another one real quick. Another part of our form and form group. And this is going to be for the age. So let's put a label and then input. Input is going to be number, and we don't need name, we don't need value, but we do need this ASP. What the heck? We do need this ASP4. That's going to be for age. And there, IntelliSense knows that we have age now in our user model because we defined it up here, what model we're using in our Razor page. Okay, so let's go back to our controller, and one of the things I want to do is I want to say in our logic here, before we add it to the database, I want to say, is this model valid, right? Does it meet the requirements that it gave it? Like, is name that's required, is that given to us? If And the rest of it, of course. If not, let's not save it to the database. So what you can do is if model state dot is valid, and I think, yeah, no, that must not be a method. That must be a property. There we go. And I'm just going to cut this and paste it in there. So what this is saying is if it's valid, if everything checks out, uh, then we're going to save it. And if not, let's just return the view. Either way, I guess they're returning the view. So how do we show the user the error messages that we gave it in the user model? How do we show them these if they forgot to enter the name or the username. Um, it's quite simple, actually. It's ASP.NET Core makes it really simple. So below each one, what we can do, what we can do is we can put a span under each one, and it's going to have an attribute called ASP Validation 4. And this this is where IntelliSense will help us out too. This is for the email, and we can also give it a class, and that'll make the text of this look a little bit uh, different. So hopefully it'll catch the user's eye. So this is a um, bootstrap class. It's called text danger. And I'm just going to copy this entire row and put it under 
each one and we'll have to change it up a little bit because this part right here is going to change depending on which one it's under. So username and then age. And what this does, this span, it gives an area for the error message to be displayed. Does that have to be capital? Yeah. It gives the error message an area or a place to be displayed if it needs to display it. Now something else we could have done, and I'll show you this after we try it the first time, but we can put all the error messages at the top here, not underneath each one. Me personally, I think it makes sense to put it under each one, um, but if you wanted to display them all at the top, something you can do is you can make a div, and then you can say ASP validation summary at the top, and you want to show all. Uh, but let's go ahead and just kill this, and we'll try that next. Because I don't want it to show. I don't want it to show all of these different error messages at the same time. Okay, so let's go to add users. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an email address. I'm going to put a name, but I'm going to leave username blank. And let's put an age of like I don't know 12, and let's hit submit and see what happens. And you can see now we have the span. It says, please enter a username because it notices that this is required, but they gave it to us blank. And this says age has to be between 16 and 99. So let's up this to 19. And let's make this username something. Let's make it jdo 21 I guess. Though I think that already exists, but whatever. Let's go ahead and submit this. There you go. You can see the error messages went away. And if we go back to our table, Here's the newest one. Age is 19, the ID is 3, uh, J Doe, J, or Joe, and then J Doe 21. So let's do it the other way. Let's show the messages at the top. And I guess I'm going to leave these um, just because I don't want to delete them all right now. But let's put a div. Let's put ASP validation summary all. And let's run this again and do the same thing. Okay, so I think I have it the same as, or maybe I had this as like 14. I don't remember. But let's hit submit and see what happens now. Let's ignore these because I just left them there. I, pr I didn't delete them in the code. Uh, but you can see now that these are new. They're at the top here. So you have two different choices. You can either put it beside each individual one that was wrong, or you can just have a collection at the top saying, hey, you forgot a username or your age has to be between 16 and 99. And there's actually quite a few different uh, attribute that you can put in the data annotations here, kind of like what we did was required. There's quite a bit, bit that you can choose from. Um, so you can go to, you can type in model validation ASP.NET Core, and you see in Google, and this will hopefully come up this Microsoft page, and you can check out all these different ones if you're interested. But these are the most basic ones, and uh, hopefully that gives you a good foundation on how to do some validation before you put it into the database, which is really important. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I think next one now we're going to do update, and I hope to see you there. See you.